He linked um, some tweets by Stefan Molyneux in my video about Mueller. And uh, I guess it's Mueller, not Mueller. It looks like Mueller, but whatever, Mueller. And, um, uh, sure enough, man, uh, besides also having a lot of anti-Semitic replies to his tweets on this, um, people are, it's like, oh, he's super smart, and he's doing it now that there's a special counsel that can investigate all sorts of Russian things like that, uranium that that she carried over and gave to Vladimir Putin, which, you know, that's a funny one because I'm just waiting for people to come in with that because that, people don't know what they're talking about, what that deal was. You know, the, people just accept how something's characterized, like, it's a bridge to nowhere. I don't have to know where that bridge is because it's nowhere, and I don't have to know what the justification was given because it's nowhere. To, that's I know enough. It was a bridge to nowhere. What more do you need to know than, the, than it was characterized a particular way? And, um, casting it like he's a super genius, arranging to have a special counsel. Um, so, that's funny. Um, I've also been noticing how, it seems to me, like, I've always been aware and thought about this, um, uh, you know, oh, I hurt my rib last weekend, I just pulled me muscle in my back or something. Beautiful day, huh? It's like 80 degrees and wearing shorts. It's freaking awesome. Um, but I've always known about this gaslighting thing. Ever since I was young, I remember a couple times getting really mad because people in arguments were trying to make other people feel crazy. And that bothered me. And um, But now I've really noticed in the last year that it's like, this is what degrades our conversations here that... Uh, that I've been trying to have, and some of us try to have, um, is just this, uh, really a predilection to go ahead and call, you know, and everything's crazy, someone's crazy. You don't think Hillary killed 50 people and is a felon? You're crazy. And, um, it's just interesting. Of course it's a good go-to because people are crazy. I mean, I've always thought if you think you know somebody that, it's totally sane, you just don't know them well enough. And a lot of that also then goes back on how we categorize sanity and what we expect. And just our expectation that, you know, nobody wants to be even a little, have even the equivalent of a head cold when it comes to mental health. Which ensures, you know, it's like I don't go to the doctor because doctors tell you when you're sick and if you don't go, you don't have to admit it and I've never been sick. And it's like, yeah, you're going to be more sick if you have that kind of attitude. And that's what we have going on mentally. But going to that, I mean, it's, it's pointless, if only because the truth of it is so universal that we really can discuss things in terms of the information that provides the evidence and whatnot. Um, but people don't really want to. And in terms of this thing of where my former online friend has inspired me or forced me to face that maybe I should try to train people how to think better, and it's just like, there are so many steps, um, so many little exercises that that would take, and you would wonder, where is it going and whatnot. But, you know, maybe it should be done. These people that don't believe in will. The problem there is, um, you know, the fatalists have never been the ones to make the world better. And, in fact, often they're the people that go, yeah, it'd be nice but you, to have this or that, things that way, but it can't be done. This is the way things are. They're the ones that step up and stop us before the people that actually want to work against us. Like the people that think there should be a, an impoverished underclass whose very life is a punishment. Before you even get to those people that are actually advocating that terrible things continue or be made even worse, you face these fatalists. Well, nothing's really gets done, and all the change you see is not really changing, and nothing's really happening, and everything you really see, and it's all an illusion, and since there's so much meaning in the world, there's actually no meaning, and we need people to get over that. I've always seen that as, uh, like, just uh, PTSD from being slaves for five or ten thousand years, and I've had a great deal of sympathy with it. But, um... Like how 
can you teach people to embrace information and their ability to process it? When people that already do that activity have decided to come down, you know, on the side against it. Uh, it's not so much that I would disabuse people of living in their fantasy worlds, but just for them to realize they're living in a world of their own construction, built, hopefully and inevitably, from information they get in the real world. But it's quite a very big real world. And so there is a lot of logical conclusions that differ based on where you are in the world and who you are and what you deal with in terms of your context. And uh, it's just really hard to imagine how to teach all you dogmatists how to be information processors. I mean, you just don't really understand what information is. And yet there's been a huge discovery uh, in terms of information that not just I have made, but, you know, the idea of information is, is a, a lot like ideas themselves and concepts. And we, you, nobody thinks that the idea is out there. It's in our mind. Of course, we can use the truism of, therefore, it's a configuration of data in our mind, even if the mind's just a recording device or it's storage device. You know, there's something physical there to it. But it is really, you know, it's a part of the mental process. You die, the, the ideas are going away and things like that. And information seemed like the same kind of thing, but no. Information is what's actually in the universe that we know. We receive information and it looks like it's about information that's out there in the, in the world. And uh, to look at the world this way, it, it rectifies and provides a foundation for our deductions and what we're really trying to do without having to make these impossible metaphysical leaps into impossible positions that we don't even need to hold. So, anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, those are my thoughts this morning. I gotta get to work a little bit late at that today. All right. I saw a New Yorker cartoon. It was like a guy in his office. He's like, I can't tell if I work at home or live at work. <laughs>